Automatic was released on December 4th, 2001 by the same developer as Bugden. In this action-adventure game, we play as the robot Automatic on a mission to save humanity from an invasion by these giant-brained aliens. The objective of every level is to reach the rocket ship, saving humans from abduction along the way. We'll face off against several varieties of aliens on our journey, using a diverse arsenal to take them out. So let's jump right into this. Level 1. We begin on planet Earth, the Bentley Farm. Stepping out of my rocket, I quickly run to save the humans in the area. If you can see a human at any time in this game, you need to run and touch them as fast as possible, or else they get abducted and... I punch these metal canisters to find weapons and power-ups. There are also these colored atoms strewn about every level. The red ones restore your health, the green ones give you fuel for your jump jet, and the blue ones are fuel for your rocket ship. The blue ones are absolutely essential, and you can't leave the level without finding enough of them. After crossing the water and breaking open the first fence, I encounter my first hostile enemies. The brain aliens are pretty easy to deal with, easily dispatched with a couple punches or blasts from my laser gun, but watch out for their brainwave attacks and headbutts. Further in the level, I encounter several edible abominations, including terrifying tomatoes, ominous onions, and carnivorous corn. We also find the overcharge laser in this level, using it destroys all enemies in the near vicinity. The most difficult part of level 1 is getting the sentient tractor to smash through the iron gates without hitting me as well. Eventually, I finally make it to the rocket ship, and I leave Earth. Level 2, Planet Snoth. Right away, you can tell the environment here is different. Crystals jet out of the land like trees. Our jumps create ripples in the ground, and these weird slime monsters pursue us everywhere we go. We also get a new weapon, the Freeze Ray. This item freezes normal enemies in one blast, leaving them open for a smash. Multiple blasts can freeze the slime monsters as well, which, when dispatched, will replicate themselves. But you can use the frozen balls the same way as colored atoms. To progress through this level, you'll have to traverse these rivers. First, you grab this magnet and go water skiing behind a submarine. Carefully dodge the crystals and other objects and let go when the sub gets close to the land. After progressing through a few more areas, you'll have to use these big bubbles to traverse another hazardous lake. Be careful though, the bubbles last only a limited time and touching anything makes the bubble pop, electrifying automatic. After crossing some jumping puzzles and another water ski ride, I finally find my rocket ship. But it's a trap! The level ends with automatic sinking ominously into the ground. Level 3 takes place inside the core of Planet Snoth. This level is unique because although there are humans here to rescue, there are no enemies pursuing you. So jumping my way through this trippy level, I reach this machine that I need to destroy in order to escape the planet. First I destroy these lasers, which causes the shell in the center to start opening. When it opens, these funnels start firing what looks like popcorn, so I destroy them quickly. After all these defenses have been destroyed, I shoot the machine itself and it blows up, ending the level. On to the next planet. Level 4, Planet Nar, the Yoth City Ruins. Clearly a great battle unfolded here. The atmosphere is thick with radioactive fog and the smoldering city skyline fills the background. New enemies roam the ruins of the city, including these robots that shoot lasers at me, and these ungodly abominations transformed by the war. Throughout this level, you'll have to fly over pools of green goo and avoid these plumes of toxic gas. However, this level has a unique gimmick in that I use my overcharged laser to power these menacing gates and these portals that take me around the city. Battling through the war-torn city, I save as many humans as I can before getting into my rocket, leaving Planet Nor. Level 5, Cloud 9 on Planet Rennie. If you have a fear of heights, this level will probably trigger it. Floating high above the clouds, you have to watch out for these trap doors in the floor. I find a new weapon, the dart. It's useful for destroying these balloons which have items inside, but not really much else. The first new enemies I face here are the killer clowns, which are easy to take down, but... <laughs> Jumping over these tires, I hop into the bumper car. Here I have to smash into these pylons that power the area. Hitting them at high enough speed does it, but it can be a bit tricky with the wonky controls. Next, I find these overgrown babies with four arms. What is happening here? Carefully jumping across these cloud platforms, I move to this area with these flying fish that drop bombs. Okay, this part of the game is really weird. Getting on this rocket slide, I take a leap to the next area. Time for more bumper cars. After finally destroying all the pylons, I enter the last area, save some more humans, and end the level. Level 6, Planet Sulak, is filled with prehistoric jungles populated by dinosaurs, massive plants, and giant bugs. The first new item here is this potion that makes us grow larger, allowing me to break through these walls and the large huts throughout the level. The new weapon here is the fireball launcher, 
useful for taking down the various plant-based enemies in this level. Much like the other levels, there are pools of water here that you have to avoid by flying over them. In this area, I'm assaulted by these absolutely cursed mutant Venus flytraps. After carefully avoiding those monstrosities and fighting my way through more dinos, I finally leave in my rocket ship. But wait, we're getting sucked back down? No, no, this isn't supposed to happen. Level 7. We land back on planet Sulak for another boss fight. This time, our objective is to take out this giant pitcher plant. The main plant sends out these spores to damage you, while the pods on either side send out vine tentacles. You can destroy the pods with the fireball launcher, but this fight's actually pretty easy without that. I just jump onto these leaves and shoot the main pitcher plant from here. He slowly turns red as the fireballs lay into him, and finally, he explodes. I make my way back to the rocket ship. Time to finally leave this planet. Level 8, Planet Dennis, the Valley of Fire and Ice. This is one of my favorite levels. There are so many unique enemies here. I start in the fiery valleys of this planet using an ice blaster to deal with these fire creatures, whatever the heck this thing is. I have to be careful here because volcanoes randomly spread up out of the ground and shoot fireballs at me. Crossing a few rivers of lava, I end up in this area full of sentient machines, including these chompers, drills, hammers, and whatever these things are. After blasting those machines to bits, I cross another lava river to the ice valleys. Here I find these ice creatures that can be killed with the regular blaster, or just melted down with the fireball launcher. I also find humans encased in ice, so I free them for some extra points. Taking this rocket sled over this huge jump, I enter the last area. There is no rocket ship in this level. Instead, I have to lure one of the hammers over to this frozen pond. Taking advantage of their smack move, I break the ice and enter the flying saucer, leaving Planet Dennis in the sty. Level 9. Using the alien's own ship, I head to planet Shebenek to save humans from the POW camp there. This level is unique because I stay in the flying saucer the whole time. Instead of my normal weapons, I can switch between the red beam and the white beam. The red beam is used to destroy buildings and turrets, while the white beam is useful for abducting humans. The goal of this level is to save as many humans as possible and bring them back to the rocket ship in the starting area. Each human I save helps fill the rocket ship with fuel. I can carry up to 10 humans at a time, so it requires several trips. Once the rocket is full, I take a few more minutes to save all the rest of the humans before entering the rocket myself and heading to the final mission. Level 10, Planet X, the Giant Brain. It's time to meet the mastermind behind this entire invasion. Touching down on the planet, I immediately notice that the whole planet is one big brain. Neurons line the walls and columns of this alien world. Before I take on the final boss, I run around the outside of the map, saving humans and collecting weapons for the final showdown. The pylons surrounding the center continuously spawn the brain's royal guards, which chase me down as I prep. When I'm ready, I destroy the central pylons, eliminate the royal guards, and face off against the brain. To attack, he splits his brain to send out these homing missiles at me. Dodging them, I seize the opportunity to attack his weak spot in the center. After enough blasts to his core, the brain finally explodes. I get back into the rocket and fly safely back to Earth. I'm given a hero's welcome by the people of Bentley Farm, and my exploits are published in the newspaper. There's some hilarious hidden gems here. The day is saved! Or is it? These are my rankings for all 10 levels in automatic. In 10th place, level 3. 9th place, level 7. 8th place, level 10. 7th place, level 9. 6th place, level 6. 5th place, level 4. 4th place, level 5. 3rd place, level 2. 2nd place, level 1. And 1st place, level 8. Have you ever played this game? What memories do you have of it? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, check out Automatic for free at PangeaSoft.net. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. That's all for today everyone, peace out for now.